It's all over. We had a good run. We had a good run, but sometimes you gotta know when to hang up the gloves. You gotta know when to walk away. You know, you can't just pretend that everything's all right when it's not all right and you're doing other things. You're focused elsewhere. You're looking at some other markets that might just be a little more profitable for you. What are you gonna do? What other option is there? You can lie to yourself. You can lie to yourself and pretend it's all gonna be okay. But it's where your heart is that matters, which is why I finally have to come forward and say, that after not talking about the news for some time, Vanessa Selps has decided to retire and we're gonna miss her dearly. We had so many good times, so many good times. She will be missed wherever she is now doing whatever it is she's doing, which I think given this tweet on January 16th, two weeks later, might actually be playing a poker tournament. To be fair to Vanessa, she didn't exactly say she was retiring, but she did say that she was walking away from poker in general, which is totally fine. People do decide to move on into other pursuits. But one thing that I find to be a little weird about poker and people retiring is that you retire from a game you could play at any point at any table around the country. I mean, I'm playing way less poker nowadays to focus on other things, but I'm not retired. I'm still planning on playing some poker at some point. It's not like the kind of thing where you have to either play or not play. And so for that reason, I don't think that it makes too much sense to say that you're going to retire. <sighs> Refreshing. It does make sense, however, to move on to other pursuits that interest you more or you have more opportunity in. You know, for example, with Heads of No Limit, I worked for many years and finally reached the top, but then didn't see a lot of upside to continue to play, so I've moved on from that, and there are certainly better Heads Up players out there in the world than me today because I haven't put any time studying to improve. For me personally, I moved on because there weren't any other opponents, but I see so many people time and time again in poker, not knowing when to walk away, not knowing when people are beating them down. They see constant losses piling up. They have to sell items in order just to pay off their debt. They have no hope of winning. They never see light at the end of the tunnel and they just can't find a way to ever seem to book a win. Never let yourself be that guy because that guy is a joke to the entire poker community. Quick announcement before we move on, Upswing Poker will be releasing its Elite Cash Game Mastery course taught by Educa Poker. This is gonna be the absolute best multi-handed cash game no limit course of all time. I'd strongly recommend checking it out. The course will be available on February 19th and cost $1,000. And if you purchase it on the 23rd or before, you're also gonna get the additional exclusive open cart content, Crush the Baron, an in-depth look at the way the OTB Red Baron plays and how you can use some of those concepts to improve your game. What's cool about this is I think many people are interested in how OTB plays, but also Edgica really modeled his game from playing with OTB and seeing what he does. So if you want an in-depth look at what one of the absolute best players in the world does, as well as what Edgica Poker's opinion is, he is certainly a top 10 player in the world. I recommend checking out the course. Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about some news that we got in the world of poker. I know it's been a few weeks since we did some news, so there are certainly many stories to cover, but I want to kick it off and talk about this one. We already addressed this a little bit at the start of the video, but we're seeing many PokerStars pros step down and leave PokerStars. This includes obviously Vanessa Selps, Jason Mercier, and Bertrand Grosspellier, otherwise known as Elkie, all stepping down from working at PokerStars. It's hard to know why exactly they're all stepping down, but I think it is fair to say that when you see a series of people leave a company, usually it means that there's something changing there. Either they want less people working for them, or maybe they're offering less compensation, but there's probably some changes going on over at PokerStars. Now, at least for these three people, they all strike me as people that have a lot going on on the side and other things that they're working on and are all very successful. So I'm sure that they also might have just found that they weren't as interested in working for poker stars. But again, the timing with all of them kind of ending around the same period of time leads me to believe there's probably something at play. As we move forward, one thing seems more and more clear. PokerStars is committed to picking up people who are active on the social media front, making videos, streaming on Twitch, posting on Instagram. These seem to be the people that they lean towards 
that's continuing to hire. I mean, just look at these faces, these people that they added in the last year. These are guys that are on Twitch or, or YouTube constantly. And so PokerStars obviously values that aspect more than the traditional show up and play a tournament. Where PokerStars is headed is hard to tell. I've yet to see much convincing evidence that they're going to do the right thing online. Supernova and Supernova Elite players were never compensated for their losses before. These rake increases across the board were never rolled back. And there are still many, many completely skillless types of poker being played on Poker Stars, as well as a rake back system that has frankly destroyed the rake back system that was in place and has also incorporated lots of luck box elements like chess. I did see an announcement from PokerStars that looked promising for PCA 2019 that they're giving away 300 seats to the event in a 25k, which should make it one of the biggest tournaments I think we've seen in quite some time outside of the World Series of Poker main event or the one drop. What? It's a big tournament. It's relevant. I won the one drop. This is not enough to restore my faith in PokerStars. We need to see some changes on the online front. Let's see some good news from people who play online. Let's see implementing some game types that people like to play like, oh, I don't know. How about heads up, no limit? I mean, heads up, no limit. Wait, I'm receiving some news. This just in. Nobody likes playing heads up, no limit. What the? Is that? Where, where did you get this? Where'd you get this information from? Bullshit! People love Heads Up No Limit! The thing about Stars' position atop the online poker poll is that there are many people looking to make some plays to try and challenge them for that spot, making improvements, launching new sites, we see blockchain poker. There are all kinds of ways that Poker Stars is going to have to compete in the future, and if they don't play their cards right, they might be getting a rake increase as well. While we're on the subject of rake and people increasing it, let's move on and talk about Daniel Negreanu. Now, I've already made some strong statements recently, so I don't want to dive too much into the weeds. I had Joe Ingram here um, on my channel to talk about some of the things that have been happening lately. And then he also posted some clips of the pod, or at least one notable clip of the pod, onto his channel. So um, I, I stand by what I said. I believe in what I said, but I have a couple more things I want to expand on. I think the statements Daniel made before were clear. I don't want to go through them again, but if you want to watch a video on what he did actually say that he keeps denying, he said, I've never said that in my life. Put a link in the description below of a video I made about a year and a half ago on why he said that more rake is better. However, if you play poker for a living, you might think that Daniel respects your profession and cares about what you have to say. Let's listen in to see exactly what he thinks about professional poker players. Are you enjoying your time in Barcelona? Yeah, I love it here. It's love beautiful. it here. What do you, you agree with the rake changes as well too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, kidding. I, I'm kidding. I, I just wanted to say hello. It it's nice not my you. favorite of the lawn equipment. The rakes. Fuck, but fuck the pros. Yeah. <laughs> she said it, not me. <laughs> fuck the pros. <laughs> fuck the pros. Just stop and think about this for a moment. This is the face of a man who gets paid millions of dollars a year to promote the game of poker. And when asked about the people who are playing that game for a living as their way of survival, this was the response that he had. And this is his face after having had his girlfriend say it. She said it, not me. <laughs> I don't think this behavior is remotely acceptable. I think we should try and embrace the people that play poker for a living and promote people trying to do that as well. And we should care about the people that without, we wouldn't have a game as it is today. Always take what you hear with a grain of salt though, because even though I was paid $0 to say this, you never know what someone's agenda truly is. Yeah, party poker? Yeah, I said it, yep, yep. Yeah, it's going up. It's going up tomorrow. Yep. 20,000's right. Mm hmm No, I, I can't take stars. What are you talking about? Moving onward and onward, the American Poker Awards are back. Now, you guys remember me getting snubbed last year, which I did not make into a big deal at all. The flop comes queen eight five, and at this point, I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> I didn't get selected by the GPI. I don't know what I have to do. What do I have to do? I mean, this was a huge deal. Everyone knows about the GPI American Poker Awards. Everyone. Well, this year they're back, and your boys got the most nominations of anybody on the panel. That's right. It's time to party. Ah, whew. 
strong. Now, last year I joked around a bunch because I didn't think these awards meant anything, even though I got snubbed, who really cares? But this year is different. I've been nominated for three awards, and frankly, now I think that they also don't mean anything. If I win three awards or I win zero awards, what really changes? What does it really mean that I'll do in the future? What does it mean about the work that I did in the past? I'm not gonna feel any different about the videos that I put out to you guys because someone tells me they were good or they were bad. I don't really care about that stuff. So even though it would be pretty LOL if I do end up winning some awards, I don't really think that this is that big of a deal. In fact, what I'm really hoping is that I don't win any because it's a lot of pressure to win an award. I'm not really used to public speaking and I don't even know what I would say. So I'm really kind of hoping that I don't win any at all. Apparently I'm up for tournament performance of the year, video blogger of the year, and biggest influencer in poker of the year. Those are three awards I really hope I don't win. But there's also another one where people can actually write in who they want to win called the People's Choice Award for Poker Personality of the Year. And I really hope that I don't win that one. For that one, there's a URL that people can go to and they can put in whoever they want. Anybody could win. Nobody is safe. Definitely do not go to that site and vote for me. Don't do that. In fact, I'm gonna put a link in the description below so that you guys know where to not go and definitely not click on so that you know where to not go. When I look at the nominations, I don't even know if I should be winning many of them. Um, I think particularly video blogger, you kind of have to give to Andrew Nimi and tournament performance of the year. You almost always have to give to the guy that won the main event. I mean, that's the tournament every year. So those two, I could certainly see losing and sort of would expect to when it comes to biggest influencer in poker, it's kind of an interesting question because um, you think about what do they actually mean by influencer? What do they mean by that word? Now, traditionally, I think people think of an influencer as somebody with an audience, which is obviously not what Carrie Katz is or Matt Savage. However, they do have a big impact on poker in terms of defining the way that it's played and what it is today. Um, and by them, I really mean Carrie Katz. Without Carrie, we wouldn't have the Aria 300K. We wouldn't have had the High Roller Series we have in Vegas. We wouldn't have Poker Central. I mean, this guy was a massive massive influencer on the world of poker. So if we're not going with the, the more, I think, commonly accepted version of influencer, which is someone with an audience, but instead of going by someone that actually impacts the game, I think Carrie Katz would make a lot of sense. Overall, I think this list of influencers is somewhat reasonable, but there were some people in the community who didn't exactly think so too. Alexander Dreyfus, otherwise known as the man behind the American Poker Awards, said he was very happy with the choices of the nomination panel. The GPI American Poker Awards jury will once again have a lot to talk about, and the winners will be picked the same day. Negranu tweeted, responding, can you define influencer? What's he have against Matt Savage? He went on to say, is this like influence on events, schedules, structures, rules, and things that affect all forms of poker? Or is there something I'm missing? I'd go with something like person most involved in influencing poker related issues that affect a large percentage of the community. Decision makers, schedule and structure makers, rule influencers, innovative ideas, etc. Now, luckily here at Polker News Productions, we have the latest Twitter technology that allows us to take tweets that might seem confusing or misguided and turn them into the actual intent of what the person meant to say. Let's take a look here at what Daniel was actually saying. Why the fuck is Doug Polk on the list? That's right, Dean Eggs. It's time to book the L. Like, like between the O and the K. Just like wedge it in there. If we look up what the word influencer actually means, it doesn't really make too much sense for Kerry Katz and Matt Savage to be on the list. However, I'm not going to take away what they've done for poker or to expand the game of poker. And so if they want to say an influencer is someone that influences poker in general, while that might not be exactly what it means, I can understand wanting to include them on the list. At this point, Negron really only had two options. Either list everything important he thought he'd done over the last year to Twitter, yelling and hope someone hears him, or to move on. Which is why he tweeted out, I'm involved with PokerStars events, PokerGo, Poker Central, contribute to WSOP, etc. But Carrie isn't really great with innovating the big blind ante and creating great new events and streams. I mean, sure, I could do that too, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to stoop to that level. Yeah, I could talk about how I won my third WSOP bracelet this year, winning the 
biggest buy in the World Series has to offer. And I did it while vlogging the whole thing on YouTube so that people could go through and watch every day as I went along. I could do that too, but I'm not going to. And yeah, those videos were just part of over 180 videos I did last year that anyone on YouTube could click on and see what poker was about, maybe play the game. Sure, I'm not gonna stoop to that level. Like the WSOP main event, where I was part of some live coverage direct to ESPN for hosting hundreds of thousands of actual nationwide saw. network TV show for a couple months, streaming a high roller I mean, and winning it for the most or money ever on YouTube. The first poker year after streaming a hundred thousand high roller and winning the most money ever on Twitch. Button. There's no way around it. I guess I just shouldn't have been on the list. Anyway, those awards are going to be going down on someday at some time, so we're certainly going to be keeping a close watch on that, and I'll have updates for you as they develop. That's going to do it for me. We're going to be back next Monday with a top 10 cash game player list from Educa Poker, who's going to get in the weeds and tell you who really is the top 10 right now, as well as a number one pick that might surprise you. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.